I'm so proud of myself. So I was supposed to go into work today, but my manager just texted me saying, now I don't have to go into work today. What a shame, what a big shame. I was gonna go to Brisbane right after I finished work to go and see my cousins and get some of my boxes out of my storage that I put in there before I went to the States last year. Now I'm gonna get it all out, sort through some stuff that I wanna take to Tokyo with me, get it out of their space and back, back in my dad's space where I'm living in. So yeah, I'm excited because now I get to leave a little bit earlier for Brisbane. Won't have to sit in a lot of school traffic hopefully by the time I get there. So yay! Okay, so now my manager just texted me saying that they might still run the training. I was supposed to do like a training thing. That's why I was like going in today. But she just texted me saying that they might still do the training, but like an hour later than they were going to do it. I might still have to go into work. Bruh. But it's okay. So I'm gonna get ready anyway, just in case I do have to go in. If not, then it's fine. I'll just still look pretty for the day. So like I said, I'm just getting ready. This lighting is not the vibe. You know how you can adjust it now on iPhone? Whoa. I just, maybe when I just get my makeup on, it'll be fine. Put some moisturizer on. When my manager texted me to say that I wasn't going in today, she said they might do it at 12. So now I need to check if she wants me to come in a little bit before 12 or still from 11. And I decided to keep me updated. Obviously, I want to leave as early as I can for Brisbane, but if I still have to work, that's fine, because that was my original plan anyway. But you know when you just get so excited and then all of a sudden your dreams are crushed. But it's okay. Things happen. It's life. Say la vie. Okay, while I'm sitting at my desk though, can I just flex a little bit on my <laughs> my Japanese language skills right now? Not that I really have much to flex, trust me. I'm still very, very much a complete beginner. Not complete beginner now that I've actually started. Like I have been a beginner, as in knowing nothing, and now I do know at least something. Nagasaki, Okinawa, Hokkaido, Yokohama. Karate, Judo, Sumo, Samurai. This is what, okay, so I've started on Duolingo, but obviously Duolingo can only get you so far, right? So I've taken it into my own hands, literally, and I've started practicing the kanji. So this is the first kanji that they teach you on Duolingo. After you start getting through the hiragana and katakana and you keep doing the lessons, then it starts letting you practice the kanji alphabet symbols. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I did this the other day. If you like asked me without me looking at this right now, like to write them, I'd probably forget the order, but I think I do know the order of the strokes. I'm so proud of myself. I feel so cultured. <laughs> Never in my life did I ever think that I would be learning Japanese or going to live in Japan. It's actually a really fun language to learn, just so fun. And I have been watching anime as well and watching Tanaka-san on YouTube. Her whole channel is basically dedicated to learning Japanese, but in a fun, unique way. And she draws really cute little characters. She's like such a talented artist as well. So that really helps me with like my listening skills and I guess anime as well. And even though I'm like very much still a beginner, I've started to notice I can like see j written Japanese and kind of work out what it's saying. Like it takes me a little while. I have to kind of like translate in my head and, and sound it out, like the little characters. I'm getting a lot better at knowing, at like hearing words that I know as well. Um, and also something about Duolingo that is kind of, it's good, but it's annoying. Like when you're learning the alphabet stuff, it will put words together out of the letters. It will ask you to say like, what is this saying? Or like, how, how is this pronounced? And then you'll put it in. But sometimes it's like actually words. So like have the actual word translation. Sometimes I think it's just random sounds that, that are in Japanese words, I guess. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Does it mean anything? Duolingo can be confusing like that. Now I'm at the point where I really want to start learning more vocabulary and probably actually speaking in Japanese, but obviously I don't really have anyone to kind of speak Japanese with or practice with. And I'm like kicking myself because when I was younger, we had a Japanese exchange student come and stay with us. She was in high school and we were a few, my brother and I were still in primary school she was so nice and but i don't remember anything really about her i don't remember like what her interests were she had very broken english as well and obviously i never thought that i would ever have to learn japanese <laughs> So, and I never really had an interest in going to Japan. We only had two languages at school that you could learn, which I think is pretty standard for a lot of schools. We only had Chinese and French to learn at school. And I chose French because I was just obsessed with 
France and Paris when I was a kid. We've lost touch with her, but if I was still in touch with her, I could like share this exciting news with her that I'm going to Japan and that I'm trying to learn Japanese. And now I can't find her on Instagram or Facebook or anything, so. So I'm gonna keep trying to look for her every now and then, and I've asked my mom to kind of go back and see if she still has an email address or something that we would have used to keep in touch with her when she first left to go back to Japan after she stayed with us. But yeah, oh, I literally still have a mirror that she gave me. She gave me this little, oh, it's so dirty, but she gave me this little compact mirror and this little bag that I still have. I still have these that she gave me. Yeah, they're like so special to me. The mirror is obviously very loved. It's so dirty. It probably used to be the same color as this. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how you would clean this though, because obviously, I mean, could you put it in like, a washing machine, but I don't want it to get broken. But I don't know, could I scrub it? I don't know, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm really proud of myself because I'm on like a 60, I think I'm over 60 days now for my streak on Duolingo. So I'm really excited because I think that's the longest streak I've ever had, even when I was learning French when I lived in Paris. I wonder if I'll be able to keep it up when I'm actually in Japan, or if I'll just kind of be like, okay, Duolingo, like, <laughs> you've had your time. Sometimes, sometimes you just have enough of it and um, sometimes you really just need to be immersed in a language to actually feel like you're learning it, but it definitely does help. When I was in Paris, I think the reason why I lost my streak was that I was just immersed in so much French every day that I didn't really feel like I needed Duolingo. If I can get away with not doing my eyebrows because I have dark eyebrows recently, I've kind of been thinking, you know what, I may as well just not do them since I do have eyebrows every day anyway, no matter if I do or don't do them. Usually I do them every time I do makeup just to kind of get a little bit more definition. Yay, now I'm not going to work after all. So now I just have pretty natural makeup look for the day. Some of my boxes. Some more of my boxes. Gonna be in my vlog? <laughs> we got the dog down, oh my God. <laughs> Workplace health and safety. Oh, be careful with that. Hold on, I'll set this up. Oh, you've already got this one. Oh my god! We are super women. Are you right with that? Yep. Got it. Let me get this just so I can help. Oh my god. Oh, that's that. Mm-hmm. The deluxe dog. Out of all that kerfuffle. Dulux had a baby. <laughs> Dulux is so stressed, he popped out a baby. <laughs> or she popped out a baby, she's a mom! Oh. So we just got all of my boxes out of storage. Well, not all of them, there's still some of them that won't fit in my car. I don't know how I actually fit them all in when I first moved them here from... Well, I was living in Brisbane, so it wasn't that far of a drive. Maybe I made two trips. I don't even remember making two trips. That was a lot of work. <laughs> and you said she feels like she's gone swimming. <laughs> I do. So sweaty. Oh, thank you, me. This is what my car looks like now. It's literally full to the brim with boxes. Even the boot is full of boxes. So, yay, I can't believe we actually did it. Funny how she just keeps begging. It's just a baby. It's just a baby. Oh my goodness, I've just stopped for fuel and <laughs> I have a pillow out of my one of my boxes because my back is so sore. I'm over halfway home. Not long to go, only less than two hours left. Well, does anyone else get a really sore back when they drive for long periods of time? Because I want to know if it's just me or like if it's some kind of injury related thing. Maybe it's specific to me that I just have a sore back, like my lower right back. So sore every time I drive, like if I'm driving nonstop for like half an hour. So when I'm driving for like four hours, 
it's like nearly the whole four hours that my back is just killing me the whole time and i'm like trying to do different postures like as i'm driving <sighs> and it just hurts so much but hopefully my pillow will help for the last couple of hours Thank you.